Hi everyone, today I'm going to be doing these little bottles from um, Johanna Basford's Flourish. Um, I'm going to be using Stedler Ergosoft pencils like I normally do. To start with, I'm actually going to start on the background and I'm going to make it quite dark. Um, this is my number 33 pencil. I'm just going to start, sorry, my, I'm just going to put my pencil sharp there to hold the page down. I'm just going to start with it, actually that causes some shadow and uh, talk you through my sort of thinking. Now we've got all these um, stars and sparkles sort of magic in the background but to me it sort of indicates a night time so I'm going to do this a sort of darkish colour. I don't want it black but uh, so I thought I would just do this uh, blue colour. Now as you can see I'm just scumbling it round and round because I don't want a sort of stripey effect or pattern or anything like that on the picture so uh, I'm just and I'm I haven't drawn around it to get a nice even edge either I'm just going to uh, have a go and just see where it leads me I'm going to do it a little bit more natural messy not really sure what you might call it now you can see my tone isn't even across the whole picture. I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. What I'm doing is I'm just getting a layer of colour down. Oh, I don't like that. There we go. And uh, then we'll see where it takes us. Now I'm colouring over these little crosses and stars and magic and things. Now they're going to go, I'm going to go over those in pen so it doesn't matter that I'm colouring over them. I will still be able to see what Johanna's drawn so I can use that as a guide because obviously um, she draws beautiful things and it's not nice to always cover them up but uh, as I say we'll be enhancing that after. And each of these bottles needs to stand out from this dark background so the um, the Ergosofts have got quite a lot of neony tones in, I find. If you use some of the pinks and purples quite hard, you get a neon effect. So uh, we can have a play around with some of those, I thought, and make them look really sort of striking. And uh, also maybe quite nasty if you want to, you know, I wouldn't want to drink these potions. So I'm just... You can see I'm still just going quite roughly with this um, pencil. It's not giving me an even dark background because I'm not pressing really, really hard. I don't want a hard, hard layer as colour. So uh, just nearly there. But what I'm going to do is add another layer on top. Now I find that helps to even out the tone of the colour and um, add some interest but I'm not going to do um, but doing a different colour means that you can get a different a unique colour as opposed to just one that you pick out of the tin right there we go now you can see it's a lot darker on this side than this side I've got to address that first or else it's going to look a little odd so I'm just going to put another quick rough layer over here what it is is because I used the sharper side of my pencil on that side and what happened the key to getting a lot of dark color can be sharpening that if you've got a sharper bit it pushes the color down into the paper more now it's hard sharp keeping your pencils really sharp all the time for several reasons if you spent a lot of money on your pencils it's quite upsetting to keep sharpening them and seeing them disappearing but if you want to use them to produce a really nice picture then you may just have to sacrifice it a bit right that I'm happy with that it's still not even but we're gonna go with it and we're gonna go over the top in number six which is a dark purple it looks really blue in my camera but uh, it's a dark purple now I'm scumbling again and pressing fairly hard you can see I'm just going to go right over and try and even up that 
background and make a sort of dark purpley colour. I think it's a nice colour, it looks, makes it look more magical um, than just blue. And it's, as I say, it's more interesting. We don't really get a purple sky, but you know, it's not necessarily supposed to be realistic, is it? Now, backgrounds like this can take a long time. And there are a few tips I can give you while I'm colouring it in. Um, pastels are much quicker, messier though, but you can cover a background really quickly. If you don't have pastels, some people use uh, makeup, like eye makeup, things like that. But you do have to make sure it was a powdery type. You don't want an oily one, it could be quite nasty. But um, experiment around on some scrap paper first and see how it works. Um, watercolours are really quick as well. I'm far too messy to be able to use watercolours, but there are some fantastic um, people who have some brilliant effects. And you can use watercolour pencil and then just go over with a little bit of blending, a blending pen or something with blending solution in, and that's much less messy. I have played around with that a little bit, but uh, the watercolour pencils I actually stole off my husband, so I had to give them back. <laughs> and um, um, another tip is if you've got a page with loads of background and it's getting a bit boring doing it all, don't do it all at the same time. Do a little bit and then go back, do a bit of the picture and then go back and do a bit of the background. Just make sure that you write down what colours you were using, what techniques you were using so you don't forget because that, you know, that would be most annoying. Okay, I'm going to leave it like that. It's still not even. It's still not perfectly neat, but I'm happy with how that actually looks. And once we do um, some of the other bits, I think it will tie in nicely. I'm just desperate to get on and do a bottle. Now, my first bottle is going to be this colour, number 61. Now, this is quite a fluorescent pink, as you will see. Now, we could leave a little gap at the top of the bottle because it wouldn't necessarily be filled right to the top but I'm not going to do that I'm going to take it right up to the top and you see I'm just blocking it in I'm not shading at the moment with this colour I want a really deep fluorescent pinky colour or neony pink I don't know colour for this bottle and I just want a very intense colour so it really stands out. And for the label I'm going to colour that in but I'm going to do it lightly. So it matches but it's not, it doesn't stand out as much. And I'm going to now do a bit of shade on the bottle and I'm going to go back to using this purple, the number six. Just going to do a very light bit on the edge to make it look a little bit more rounded and a little bit on this side. I'm not going to use too much or else it's going to just disappear into the background. And a little bit there and there. Now, this one behind, it's going to be the um, neon pink, which is the number 20. And again, I'm going to go right up to the top of the bottle. and colour it in a really hard layer but as you can see I'm just going over and over to get that deep bright colour and I'm going to do um, a little bit of shading on the edge of this one like I did on the last one once I've got this intense colour down I'm going to go back and use the one that I used for the other bottle, which is the number 61. I'm just going to use it on this edge here, and here, 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 and then a little bit on this outside edge too. Just a very small amount. There would be some shadow here, but I'm not going to do it because 
it'll uh, it'll just blend into that okay now we've got two left and i'm thinking do we keep with our pinks and i think we will just to keep it all tied in so this one is going to be number 23 i'm just making sure that's not the red it is the dark pink and again using the same technique making it look like a really dark liquid in this bottle I don't know if you can hear the piano in the background my um, next door neighbour is giving a piano lesson so uh, that's what we can hear this does look quite red rather than pink but I think it'll be okay I still think it's definitely a pinky red colour. There we go. Now darkening up the edges, I'm just trying to think of what I can use. I think I'm going to use the purple again. Number six. Now you notice I haven't done any lids on these bottles. That's because I'm going to make them all the same. I haven't decided what colour they are. Oh, we haven't done the label on this one. So back to this um, number 23. And I'm just going to, like I did on the other one, I'm just going to do a lighter version of the colour. I think I might do a bit on there as well. Some of these, I may leave the labels white. I haven't decided yet. My last one's going to be purple, but I'm going to go in with this lighter number 62 and do exactly the same as we did before this hopefully will stand out from the background now when we've finished these bottles we're going to go in with some pens now I'm going to use Posca pens to do some of the effects and uh, you could use um, fine liners for some of it if you've got some or even um, any sort of markers and things and because we're using because this is a printout it's not in a book you don't have to worry quite so much about bleed through um, in a book I'm always really careful with what pens I use because I don't want it going through the page but uh, as it's just a piece of paper it doesn't matter so there we go with our light pink and again with the uh, purple with the number six I'm so sorry about the phone ringing I've actually been on the phone for about an hour talking to my lovely parents and I've just noticed my camera has unfocused it's un zoomed out I shall zoom back in I've got to try and remember what I was doing Oh, sorry, that's blurred. There we go. Okay, so I've got this dark purple out, which was number six. So I assume I was going to be doing some shading around the bottle. I'm pretty sure that's what I was probably doing. Oh, sorry about that. But it did give me an opportunity to find out some of my pens before I started recording again. Now I'm going to go back with the light um, purple number 62 so my page keeps curling up and do a little bit of detail on here in exactly the same way I did on the others there we go now we need to do the um, the corks and tops of each of the bottles and I need to decide on a colour I think I'm going to use a blue and I'm going to go with number 63 as I said I can do them all the same so there's some consistency now for this one I'm going to go dark on the edges and a bit lighter towards the middle just to make it look like it's got some light shining now this one I did lighter here because that bit's inside the bottle and this one we don't have a bit inside the bottle so I'm going to try and go a little bit lighter on the edges and do the same on this one now the labels I'm still leaving white at the moment. I haven't decided whether I'm going to colour them in or not. What I'm going to do next is the stars and bits in the background and then I can decide. Mm. So I've got my um, yellow and Posca. It's the smallest 0.7 millimetre tip. I'm just going to shake it up. 
and I'm going to use it for all of the stars. As I say, you could use a fine liner for this. Could you, you could use a like, yellow pencil, but I find that it just gives a brighter, more definite colour. So I'm just going to do all of them with this one. You can also use it to cover over the black lines around the edge if you want to. But you might need a few layers to cover, cover them up in full. So I'm not going to worry too much, though, because my colouring is so unprecise, it goes out of the lines anyway. There we go, and the last one down here. Now for the um, little flourishes in the background, I've chosen two other Poscas, and these are very bright fluorescent sort of colours. I don't use them a lot, but I thought for this magical picture, it might just work. So what I'm going to do is do all the um, cross shapes, these magical bits, in this pink. And then I'm going to use the blue to do a few dots. There we go. Oh, there's one up here. There we go. So the blue one. Sorry, I just have to shake them up. I try and do this is called light blue. And the pink, just for reference, is just called pink. And I'm just going to do some dots. I'm going to make them quite defined. You see, I'm not just dotting, I'm actually forming a little circle. It just gets a bit more colour out. And I hope that makes it look a bit more magical. And I'm going to do some white as well. But I'm going to use my this white. I find my Posca white is a bit watery. I don't know if it's because it's getting a bit old. So I'm going to do a few more white dots around here. But we're also going to do some detailing inside the bottles as well. Now I think doing some some little bubbles in the bottles would look quite fun. So I didn't do dots actually. Just makes it look more magical. Now I'm not going to do them all the same now. So this one I might do some little swirly bits. And I've just noticed that this one looks a bit like a bottle of ketchup. But anyway, we shall pretend it doesn't. <laughs> and do little groups of dots in this one. Just to be a bit different. And this one, we can do some of these shapes. Like are in the sky. Oh gosh, I don't know if you heard the train going by. It's, they all sound their alarm. We've got a crossing near our house. Now the last bit I'm going to, well, might not be the last bit. Number 80, which is my light grey. I'm going to do this glass bit here. Just a little bit. I'm going to leave white in the middle to make it look shiny. Now all these labels. I'm looking at them. I think the white looks a bit unfinished. So I'm going to take a light blue, this is number 30, and I'm just going to do a rough, a very light colouring of light, just a blue tint, so it doesn't look like I just haven't bothered to do it. Around here, there we go. There's my magical potion bottles. I hope you enjoyed that and uh, I hope you have fun um, having a go at it yourself. Um, thank you for watching and happy colouring. <laughs>